Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's tutorial is based on a request I received and I'll be walking you through how to sculpt fingers. For many artists, sculpting fingers can feel like one of the most challenging aspects of character modeling. I used to think the same way, but after lots of practice, I've realized that sculpting fingers isn't as difficult as sculpting a face. It just requires a bit of attention to detail and the right technique. Now, fingers are small and delicate, so they can be tricky, but with the right approach, you can achieve natural looking hands that will work perfectly in your model. So stick with me until the end, and I'll make sure you walk away with some valuable tips. Let me start by sharing a personal experience. I'm not sure if this happens to everyone, or if it's just me, but there are days when I just can't seem to sculpt fingers the way I usually do. For example, Sometimes I can sculpt them flawlessly, and other times I struggle, especially with the nails. There have been projects where I simply couldn't get the nail area right no matter what I tried. After hours of trial and error, I've had to cut off the entire hand and replace it with a hand I'd previously sculpted. Not the most ideal solution, but it worked for me in those cases. I've noticed this happens more when I work with different skins, or when I've made subtle changes to my settings. For example, I usually keep my subdivision surface at two and only push it to three if absolutely necessary. I think the inconsistency might come from how different subdivision levels affect the mesh density in certain areas. Has anyone else experienced this? If you know why this happens or have any insight, please leave a comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So why exactly are fingers tricky to sculpt? Well, part of it comes down to their shape and proportion. Fingers are long, thin, and involve a lot of intricate details. Nails, knuckles, creases, and so on. Getting the right proportions is essential, and even small deviations can make the hands look unnatural or off balance. Plus, since fingers play such a significant role in posing and animation, they need to deform correctly when you rig your model, or else the poses will look strange. Trust me, there's nothing worse than sculpting a beautiful hand only to find out later that the rigging has gone haywire. Now, let's talk about nails, probably the most delicate part of finger sculpting. I've found that the key to nailing the nails, pun intended, is to be patient and take your time here. I use very small, precise brushes for this part. I prefer brushes with hard edges to define the nail's boundaries then switch to softer brushes to shape the rest of the nail and smooth out the transitions between the nail bed and skin. A common mistake is over-defining the nails, which can make them look too sharp or unnatural. Try to keep the nails subtle, but clean. And don't forget to pay attention to the thickness and curvature of the nails. Natural nails aren't flat. They have a gentle curve, and getting that right can make a big difference in realism. One of the most important tips I can give you is not to make the fingers too long. This can be tempting if you're trying to exaggerate certain features, but you'll regret it later when it comes time to rig your model. If the fingers are even slightly too long, they'll look awkward in poses and could appear broken or deformed when you move the rig. In one of my early projects, I made this mistake. I thought making the fingers longer would add elegance, but when I tried to pose the sim, the fingers bent in unnatural ways, and the whole model looked off, I had to go back and shorten them, which took extra time, so trust me, keep your finger proportions realistic from the start, and you'll save yourself a lot of hassle later. Another thing to watch out for is the thickness of the fingers. If your sim has fingers that are too thick, they may look like they're clashing or intersecting when you try to pose them. On the other hand, if the fingers are too thin, they can look fragile or weak, especially when posed in action shots. The solution? Stick to a balanced proportion that works with your base rig. For example, I use a standard sim rig for my poses, and when I sculpt fingers, I keep in mind how they'll look when rigged. If the fingers are too thick, the poses may look awkward, and if they're too thin, the fingers could look unnatural or even break apart in certain poses. Try to keep them just right, neither too thick nor too thin, so they will pose smoothly without any issues. Now, 
Don't be afraid to experiment with your sculpts. There's no harm in trying new techniques, shapes, or proportions. After all, that's how you improve. If you're not happy with how the fingers are turning out, you can always start over. It's better to redo a sculpt than to stick with something you're not satisfied with. Sculpting is all about patience and practice. Sometimes things will go smoothly and other times they won't. But each time you sculpt, you learn something new. And that's what matters. So take your time, experiment, and enjoy the process. Let's also talk about the brushes I like to use. I tend to stick with the same brushes I use for sculpting the body when I work on the fingers. I find that using consistent brushes across the entire model helps maintain a cohesive look. However, when it comes to more detailed areas like nails and knuckles, I switch to smaller, more precise brushes. You'll want something with enough control to define the shapes, but soft enough to smooth out any harsh transitions. If you're wondering about specific brush settings or adjustments, I recommend experimenting with different hardness levels and falloffs. Having the right brush settings can make a world of difference, especially when working on smaller, more intricate parts like fingers. After I finish sculpting, I always test the model in a pose to make sure everything deforms correctly. This is an important step because what looks good in a neutral pose might not hold up in more dynamic positions. If something doesn't look right, like if the fingers bend awkwardly or intersect, it's a sign that you need to adjust the proportions or tweak the rigging. Don't stress over small imperfections, but definitely keep an eye out for anything that could become a bigger issue later. If you love sculpting but find yourself struggling with certain parts, don't worry. It happens to all of us. You can always ask for help or guidance. And if you're interested in having me sculpt for you, feel free to contact me on Instagram. I offer sculpting services for $10, and you can find the link in the description below. I don't do magical transformations, and I don't add skin shaders, but I can help improve your Sims appearance if you send me the diffuse card. That's all for today's tutorial. I hope you found it helpful and learned something new about sculpting fingers. If you did, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!